A toad and a what? Hey, Chef Des coming at you from my kitchen again. Yeah, we're gonna make a British classic. It's called a toad in a hole. What the heck is that? Well, it's basically uh, a big Yorkshire pudding with sausages. And man, over there, they eat it for lunch, dinner, whatever. And traditionally, it's made with a uh, red onion gravy for when you want a savory application. And people would serve it with mashed potatoes, some roasted vegetables, maybe a green salad. And it's, wow, what a great dinner made with good old BC eggs. So I'm gonna show you that red onion gravy after we get this in the oven. It's really quick, simple recipe, and you'll find both these recipes actually at bcegg.com. And I'm also gonna show you another application for you when you want it a little bit on the sweet side. Cause I like a little maple syrup on my sausages. So we'll show you that as well, a couple of different ways. It's gonna be great. Let's start off with a pan. So we're going with about an eight by 11 inch pan. Now if you use a darker pan, the sausages are gonna get browner, but I really like the presentation of a decorative pan like this. A Little bit of oil in there, and we're gonna take our sausages. Now, because this is a British dish, I'm gonna use bangers. What I'm doing is just get them in there, coating them in the oil, and I have my oven preheated at 425 degrees. If you're using convection, put it at 400 degrees, and we're just gonna get those sausages in there now that they're nicely coated. In the oven I go. Now I'm setting a timer for five minutes. I want you to cook these for 10 minutes, but about the five minute mark, I want you to take them, flip them over, put them back in for the second five minute interval, okay? So now let's make the Yorkshire pudding batter. We're gonna start with our beautiful BC eggs. Now I tell you all the time, but I want you to always remember, this is the real nutrition of the dish. Every single large egg has 14 key nutrients, all nine essential amino acids, only 70 calories for one large egg, and six grams of the highest quality protein you can get. So let's go with four eggs. All right, and we're just gonna take a whisk and beat these guys up really, really good. All right. Then to that, we're gonna add our milk. Then flour, just regular all-purpose flour. We're gonna use sugar. Now, four tablespoons of sugar seems like a lot, but trust me, it works. But a great thing about that is really gonna aid in the caramelization of this dish. Get it nice and golden brown and a little bit of salt too. Gotta keep everything balanced and just whisk it until completely smooth. All right, there's the timer for our five minutes. Let's take those sausages out. And all we're gonna do is just flip them over. This helps to get a head start on the sausages for their cooking time and also aids in the browning a little bit. And again, darker pan, more brownness. Another five minutes and we'll come back. We're gonna take them out. Now, before you put the batter in there, you wanna make sure that you separate the sausages and keep them evenly spaced. And we're gonna pour the batter in. Now, you need to work quickly because you want that batter to go in a hot pan. You can pour it over them if you want, in between, doesn't really matter. Just get the whole batter in there as fast as you can in the oven. Here we go. We're gonna set a timer for 30 minutes. Do not peek in the oven, okay? You can look through the window if you want, but don't open the door. We need that heat the whole time. And this is where the magic happens. Those eggs are gonna give it incredible rise. It's gonna puff up all around those sausages. We'll see that in a bit. But now let's get started on our red onion gravy. Now in a preheated pan over medium heat, I want you to add a couple tablespoons of butter, okay? Just let that melt, and once it gets foamy, then we know that the butter is hot, and we're gonna add the onions. All right, butter's nice and foamy. I'm gonna put in the onions. So this is a medium to large red onion, so it should equal out to about one and a half cups of sliced, okay, thinly sliced. To that, we're gonna add a little bit of salt. That's really gonna help the juices flow of the onions, and I want you to cook this medium heat for 10 minutes. Okay, we're looking for those onions just to become soft and slightly caramelized. And you'll see some browning happen at the bottom of the pan at that point as well. And just stir it occasionally, okay? We'll see it back here in 10 minutes. All right, so you can see now, 10 minutes later, it's just starting to brown on the pan a little bit and the onions are just starting to caramelize. So this is perfect. What we're gonna do now, add one more pat of butter, another tablespoon, and our flour. This is what's gonna thicken it up. 
So stir that around, that butter will melt pretty quick. And we need to cook the flour. Now this is important, okay? A lot of people make gravy and they rush this step. You need to cook that flour for at least two to three minutes. We're gonna do two minutes because we're on medium heat. And you need to stir it frequently so the flour keeps getting cooked. And that's gonna remove the starchy taste of the flour. That's really important. You don't wanna serve gravy that tastes like raw flour. Here we are, a couple minutes later, our flour is nice and cooked. And now we're gonna add a couple cups of beef broth. Now you have to add it slow, watch this. It'll go so thick, that's that flour thickening power. So a little bit of time, work it in. Don't add too much, otherwise you're gonna get lumps. Nobody likes the lumps. And once that little addition is combined, add a little bit more and just keep doing that. And don't add any more until the last bit has been thoroughly mixed in. It'll come together, just gotta be patient and be thorough with your stirring so you get all the areas where the flour is. As you get to that halfway mark of adding the broth, you can go a little bit faster as your risk of lumps is really low now. And then just put the last bit in. Then we're gonna add that little bit of sugar just to keep it nice and balanced. Now what I want you to do, put the heat on high. Bring it to a full boil, that way we know we're working with a completely hot gravy. And then turn the heat to a medium high, down from high, and just let it boil for two minutes so it get that consistency that you want in a gravy, okay? All right, good. And I'm just gonna turn it down medium high and just stir it occasionally. That flour is gonna thicken it up. All right, perfect, that's been two minutes. We're gonna shut off the heat. And now we just let that sit. I mean, if you're happy with the consistency, take it off the burner, um, you know, put a lid on it, whatever. If you want it to reduce down a little bit more, just leave it there with the lid off. The more steam that rises from it, the more water content is gonna be evaporated from it. So a uh, good time now to test it. We just take a spoon, a nice sauce should coat the spoon nicely, and it does, so I'm happy with it. The other thing we can do, taste. And if you want to add a little bit more salt, I don't know how salty your beef broth is that you're using. If you want to add a little bit more salt to season this, maybe a little bit of fresh cracked pepper, you can do that at this time. Oh yeah, it's good. Okay, we're about to pull this out of the oven. Now you want to make sure before you do that, call everybody to the table because once you take this out, that's the best display. It's nice and puffed up in a, you know, a few seconds, maybe 30 seconds to a minute, it's gonna deflate and it's still gonna be great, don't get me wrong, but you're just gonna lose that ooh and ah factor when people see it nice and puffed up coming from the oven. Okay, so let's have a look. So we haven't peaked the whole time. Look at that, beautiful. I mean, that is remarkable to see that coming to the table and so scrumptious. So how I want you to cut this, now that it's at the table and everyone's like, wow, look at that, my mouth is watering. Five really big portions, so you just cut it with a whole sausage in each, or like I say in the recipe, 10 smaller portions. So cut it in half first, and then cut between the sausages. We'll give you 10 smaller portions. And then I'm gonna show you two ways on how we can serve this. So let's grab our knife and we're gonna cut it right down the middle. And it's gonna deflate as you cut it too, obviously, because you're releasing steam. And then cut it between the sausages. And then we're gonna get in there and put one on each. Now on the first one here, this is how I like it. And honestly, not just for breakfast, you're gonna think breakfast because it's maple syrup, but breakfast, lunch, dinner, I love the sweet of the maple syrup with the sausage. It's fantastic. So a little bit of maple syrup drizzled over top. Or for a more traditional, we're gonna go with that red onion gravy. And this brings it more into a savory application. So a lot of people would use this for dinner or lunch and just spoon that gravy over top. Look at that. And either one is absolutely amazing. I can hardly wait to eat this. This is gonna be so good. This is Chef Des signing out. Don't forget to check out the website, bcegg.com, where you're getting your protein from.